What's good, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Rugged Haitian Q theme music. What's good? What's good, everyone? We back. We back. Thank you for tuning in to the Rugged Haitian Podcast. Man, gather around. I got a story to tell. Yo, so you know how you got family, man. They always there for you. Never leave you hanging. Looking out for you. Real family stuff. You feel me? Family. La familia. You feel me? And you can always trust on family to be there for you. Man, let me tell y'all what happened this weekend, man. Saturday night. So I'm sitting at the crib. It's me and my niece, right? Now, now my wife had already went to work. My wife at work, so it's just me and my niece at the house. My wife working... 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. You feel me? Keep that in mind. She's working 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So she working overnight type stuff, right? So I'm chilling in the crib. It gets a little late. I say to myself, let me go unlock the door so that she can get in. You feel me? So that she could get in, I could stay in bed and get all the sleep that I need. So that she won't have to call me, no nothing, man. No nothing. So I go to bed around like 12, 30, 1 o'clock. I let my niece stay up. It's a weekend. So she's staying up watching um The Good Doctor and stuff. So she watching her shows. So then, I'm chilling. And then I go to sleep and then I wake up at 530 because that's what time I get up. You feel me? That's what time my alarm set. I get up at 530. Mind you, I'm still trying to sleep. So I'm about to hit the snooze button. But then I realize, oh, snap, I have to go unlock the door for my wife. She about to come home in like two hours. I don't want her to wake me up. I don't want her to do nothing. So I get up off the bed, start going downstairs, sleepy. Tell me why I fell down the stairs, yo. (laughs) Nah, bro. Like, actually fell down the stairs. Like, I ain't talking about, oh, there's three steps left and you missed one. And it's like, oh, snap. I almost fell down the stairs. No, I'm talking 10 stairs left. A whole flight, son. A whole flight of stairs left, man. I fell down all them things. And I ain't talking about you sliding on your body. It was like, oh, snap. No, I'm talking. You ever seen them cartoons when one of the cartoon characters fall down the stairs, their arms going everywhere, they bumping into walls, they bumping into banister, man, they running into everything, that's exactly how I, I fell down the stairs like I was a drunk man, bro, and as I was falling, bro, <laughs> yo, as I was falling, mid-air, as my head is bumping into walls, running into the rail, I'm thinking to myself, I know I ain't falling down. (laughs) I'm thinking to myself, I know I ain't falling down no stairs right now. I know I ain't falling down no stairs. Who falls down stairs? Nobody falls down the stairs anymore. That only happens in the movies. You feel me? You got to get kicked down them joints. You don't just fall down the stairs. Man, when I say I fell down the stairs, man, I fell down the stairs. Like midair, as I'm bumping into everything, I'm thinking, I cannot be falling down the stairs right now. I'm like, this must be a dream. 
I ain't falling down no stairs. All that happened, man. Hit the bottom. And I sit there for like five minutes thinking, did I really just fall down the stairs? Like, (laughs) I couldn't believe it, man. I couldn't believe it. So, after five minutes pass, I get up thinking I got to unlock the door so that she could get in. Get to the door. This is what makes everything worse. I get to the door. The door already unlocked. The door was already unlocked, man. So I done risked my life to unlock the door that I already unlocked, man. And that ain't even the worst part. So I make it back upstairs and whatnot. Go to sleep. Guess who calling me two hours later to open the door? To open the door that I already broke my neck to unlock. My wife. My wife calling me. Talking about some, can you come open the door? I'm heading home from work. I'm like, everything that I did so that I would be able to sleep in, so I won't have to worry about every, anything, gone out the window, man. So that's what happened to me, man. That's what happened to me. And that's where we at nowadays, bro. That's where we at with these kids. Because remember I told you, my niece is in the house too, you feel me? So I'm up. In the morning, she come downstairs. I said, did you hear that sound last night? She said, she said, yeah, I heard it. It sounded crazy. I said, yeah, that was me falling down the stairs. She said, oh, I thought you was okay. So I did. (laughs) She said she thought I was okay. So she figured. She don't need to get up out the bed to go check up on me. She said, I thought it was the door. I said, doors don't thump like that. Doors don't thump like that, man. Doors don't thump. Man, she talking about some, oh, I thought you was okay. You ain't even go to check. You ain't even peep down and say, uncle, what was that? You ain't say nothing. Man, these kids don't care, bro. They don't care. I, I've come to the conclusion. And then, want to make it crazier? I then tell my wife this story. You know what she going to say to me? Dang, that's crazy. I'm like, wow. You ain't going to ask me if I'm okay. You ain't going to ask to see the scratches on me. You ain't going to check my head. You ain't going to do none of that, man. I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to just have to get life alert (laughs) because ain't nobody caring for your boy, man. Ain't nobody caring for your boy, man. I I, I done fell down the stairs and nobody bats an eye, bro. I'm about to be just like that old lady. I've fallen and I can't get up just like that, bro. Just like that, cause cause cats obviously, obviously don't care about your boy, man. Man, I remember when I was younger. If anything like that were to happen, everybody, everybody had to come home to check up on my dad. <laughs> Why I say my dad? <laughs> to check up on my parent, bro. It was always my dad, though. If he was sick, if something happened, everybody had to be there, man. It don't matter if you live an hour away, two hours, three hours, man. I was responsible. If my dad was sick, if he was in the bed all day, man, it it was my responsibility as his child to come and be there to make sure he ain't dead, to check up on my man. And then he'll they'll always hit you with this, Haitian parents. You're going to miss me when I'm gone. You gonna miss me when I'm, what you gonna do when I'm gone? What if I die? What? <laughs> Every time, if you miss one day, they say they sick and you don't call and check up on them, they'll, they'll hit you with that. What if I died? What would you have said? What if I died? It's like, bro, but you ain't dead. But it be like that though, man. It be like that. So yeah, man, 
These these kids nowadays, they don't care for their parents, yo. Especially these Haitian kids that's been Americanized, bro. These Haitian kids that been Americanized, they don't care. They don't know the respect. They don't understand the respect of, uh, watch your mouth. You feel me? Or, uh, if I fall down the stairs, you need to come and check up on me. I shouldn't have to rely on life alert. You feel, <laughs> you feel me, bro? You feel me? But that's all I have for y'all for today, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to the Rugged Haitian. Peace.